Hi, and welcome back to Samoyed Sundays. Today we are doing one of, well, the most requested video. It's all about how I groom my Samoyeds. This one over here, Tinkerbell, I've been grooming Hi, for about four years now. You're getting older, huh? And then Miko right here is just over a year. But yeah, so I guess we will just jump right in. I'll be telling you all of the products I use first, showing them, kind of explaining what's inside, and then there will be some clips at the end of them actually getting washed in the bath, grooming, etc. When I'm filming this, it is January in the middle of winter. I don't wash my girls during the winter unless they really, really need something like this one. When she was little, got skunked, and I had to wash her in the winter. However, um, because Samoyeds have hair instead of fur, you really don't need to wash them that often. Um, and I'm talking about like full on bathe in the bathtub and get them soaking wet, but you do have to groom them quite often. So all of the clips that you'll see were from this past summer when Miko was itty bitty. So if you're wondering why there's a size discrepancy, that's why. You're old now, huh? So we'll start out with brushing. I brush the girls almost every day, if not every other day. Not a full brush, but just kind of like a run over, get some of the fur out. And can't probably see it, but these yoga pants, um, they are gray instead of black because there's always going to be fur no matter what. If you're looking for a dog that doesn't shed, do not get a smoked. So I use a couple of different brushes. This is just a regular slicker brush. Yeah from Petco. It's plastic, has little metal bristles. The bristles have little um, almost like rubberized uh, tips at the end so you, if you get super down in there you're not gonna scratch their skin. Ha! Huh. But yeah, super simple. You can get these pretty much everywhere. I like this one because the handle has curves so when you're brushing lots of fur it's easy to hold on to. And the other, and the other absolutely must have is a comb. This is what's going to get out their inner coat. There is a wide side and there is um, a really fine side to get ears and stuff like that. But this, if you go down deep into their coat, uh, because it's in the middle of winter, they're not going to be like poofing out. But as you can see, just that little bit will get quite a bit of fur out of there. I absolutely recommend a metal one. I have gotten plastic handled ones with the metal teeth and they will break on you all of the time. Um, Samoyeds have a lot of fur, so even if you're not pulling on that fur, they will absolutely break them. I went through like three or four before I found this one at Petco. They are more expensive, worth it, period. Heading on from there, I'll talk about what I use to actually bathe them and <laughs> nice Miko. When I mean bathe, I mean put actually in the bathtub, um, shampoo, conditioner, all of that. I love, I love the brand Earth Bath. It's an all natural pet shampoo. It has ingredients that you know what they are. This one is perfect for the girls. It's a light color coat brightener. Um, it's lavender scented, it smells really great, really gentle on their skin. And yeah, <laughs> they know what this is. As soon as they bring out some shampoo, they're like, uh uh, mom. The shampoo is 100% biodegradable, animal cruelty free. Love it. This is another one of the shampoos. I thought I had pulled out my conditioner. They have um, a couple different types of conditioners. I like them all. There's an oatmeal one that I really enjoy. And all of the products I talk about here, I will link down below. If there's not one specific one, I'll link something super similar. Yes. The other brand I like for full-on baths is Burt's Bees for Dogs. This is an oatmeal shampoo. If your dogs get really dry skin and it's like itchy or scratchy, things like that, um, this oatmeal shampoo will help alleviate some of that itchy pain. I also like the ingredients in this. It's pH balanced, cruelty free, no parabens, phthalates, all of that crap not in here. Um, and this has a matching conditioner as well, so it's that um, oatmeal and honey. This I love. It smells great. It's grapefruit and chamomile, and it is True Blue Pets Fresh and a Splash Cleansing Spray. This is kind of like dry shampoo for dogs. If they're a little bit stinky, 
Um, I don't want to give them a full bath. You can do a couple squirts of this. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine for them. You just rub it in and they smell nice and fresh. Um, it's hyperallergenic. You leave it in. You don't have to rinse it off. <laughs> yeah, you like that smell, huh? But this is just a simple go-to if maybe you're like going out, something like that, and you want to freshen up your dogs before they're going to go jump on a bunch of people, this is what I go to. Next, this is my homemade dog toothpaste. I actually did a video with the recipe of this, so I will link that in either the card or below. And I brush my dog's teeth as much as I can. You're supposed to brush them every day, just like you would yourself. But that, especially if your dogs hate getting their teeth brushed, what are you girls doing? Is not going to happen. So this is that tooth uh, paste. It, you can buy one at the store. I prefer this because it's all natural, super easy, really inexpensive to make. And that recipe makes a whole, what, half a pint here, so it lasts for quite a while. Then I also have, um, this is a dog toothbrush, and then this one has a big side and a little side, so if you have smaller dog teeth, or a smaller dog with smaller teeth, you can use that little itty bitty as well. Don't forget to brush their tongues. All of that will, all of the information about brushing your dog's teeth will be in that video linked below. So I have three more tools to show you before we move on to what I actually do with grooming. They're all for their feet. So this is a heavy duty nail clipper. I like this one, got a great handle, um, non-slip. So once you have their nail in there, super easy to pop it off. It has a sliding cut on the back that's super sharp, so you don't have to spend more time down there than you need. Then, this is a nail file as well. If you get a little extra hangnail, something like that, you can buff everything off so it's nice and neat and it doesn't get caught in anything. And both my nail clipper and this file are from Four Paws. I bought them at Petco. And last, especially for dogs with long fur, you need a pair of scissors. These are really nice ones from Martha Stewart Pets, also from Petco. They come in a nice little sheath that you can keep them in and they stay super sharp. Um, for long haired pets, you can just snip off the extra fur from the insides of the paws, things like that. I will be doing a whole video on how I take care of the girl's paws. Um, about nail clipping, how to groom the inside, the pads, things like that. So make sure you subscribe so you'll see that in the future. Those are all the tools and products I use to groom the girls. Now we'll be getting into kind of how I go about grooming them. First off, I will always, 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 you get as much fur out as possible so it's easier to dry them, things like that. First, I take that slicker brush, I get everything off the top coat, and then I will go through and pull out all of the fur I can with this inner coat brush, this comb. As you can see in the video clip, there is lots and lots of fur in a Samoyed. That was one of their first sheds of the um, spring-summer season, so I absolutely recommend going somewhere where it doesn't matter if it gets messy. I live in an apartment, the hair will get anywhere, so I can do it inside, but it was really nice to be able to walk over to a park. And because it was spring, I picked up most of the fur, but the fur that I didn't get, um, birds actually use it to create their nests, so they're nice and cozy for their little ones. After you've gotten as much fur out as you possibly can, then you take them into the bath. You start out by completely soaking them. I don't keep any water in the bottom of the bath. I know it's horrible for the environment, but I like to keep the tap running just because if I stick my girls in a full bathtub, it is going to be everywhere. Everything is going to be soaking wet and the girls will be very unhappy. So totally soak them and I do two different rounds. So I go in and I shampoo everything. Um, be really careful around their eyes and their ears. You don't want water to get any in any places that they don't like, just like what you do with a kiddo. You don't want to just dump a box of water, a box, that would be impressive, dump a bucket of water over their heads. So I go in first with the shampoo, get that completely out, go back in with the conditioner, and I'll wait with that conditioner on for about five minutes, just like you would do with a hair mask. Um, Samoyeds have hair instead of fur, so a lot of the same kind of things that you do with your own hair, you do it um, with a Samoyed. That is why they're hyperallergenic, um, because they don't have that dander just like we don't. 
Then, after getting out of the bath, I first like to just do a really quick towel dry, um, get as much as that, just extra water off as you can. Then I'll take the girls for a walk. One of the reasons I don't bathe the girls often in winter is because I don't want them to get cold, frostbite, all of that jazz. They have multiple layers of fur for a reason. <laughs> I don't want to get that soaking wet and then have to walk them outside. So I'll take them for a little walk. They can shake off as they go. And then I'll come back inside and I use a hair dryer, which you can get fancy schmancy dog blow dryers. It goes a lot quicker. Um, this whole process of combing, brushing, bathing, drying takes the full day. So, especially with two dogs. So I'll come back in, the hair dryer is on high, but it's not on the highest heat. Samoyeds can get overheated really easily, and especially if they still have that double coat, if they have their winter coat on, you don't want to overheat them. So just blowing away the water. Um, and depending on your dog and your dog's skin, they can get hot spots if you leave anything wet. So really try to focus on getting as much of that water away from the skin as possible. Hot spots are no fun. The skin's gonna flake off. Your girls are gonna be in a little bit of pain. So make sure that everything is super dry. This is why I like starting off in the morning. So by the time the girls need to dry, it's like high noon and you can take them for a long walk and get most of that water out before you have to go in with a hairdryer. Pretty much hairdryer is um, how you make sure the hair looks nice, smooth, blow out for the girls, and to get that last bit of wetness off before they go to bed. Then after all of that blow drying, I go back in with that same slicker brush, brush everything down, make sure all of that loose hair is out so it's not all over your house or apartment, and go back in and trim up their paws. Once again, if you don't know how to do that, I'll be having a video about that in the future. If you have any more questions or comments, leave those down below. I'd love to know what you guys want to see in future grooming videos. I absolutely look at all those comments and I respond to all of the ones I can. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you again soon. Bye!